Pydantic is a Python package that's an alternative to data classes and it adds a couple of really cool features. In this video I'm going to show you how to use it and when you should choose Pydantic over the built-in data classes. Let's dive in. If you're new here, you want to become a better software developer, gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So why should you use Pydantic? It offers a lot of the functionality that data classes also offers, like defining a class with data attributes, Dunder methods like equality, wrapper and string, and more. Also, if you want to use Pydantic, you're going to have to install it, whereas databases is a built-in package. But there's a couple of really cool features that Pydantic adds, and that's extensive support for data validation, conversion, and sanitizing. And that's a pretty good reason to choose Pydantic over data classes. Let's look at an example. Here's a JSON file. It contains a number of books. Each book has a title, author, publisher, ISBN number, a price, and some other information. And we want to create a Python program where we can basically read and process this data in some way. So here's my simple Python script that has now only main function that opens the JSON file, loads it, and then we can start printing out anything that's inside the data set. For example, I could print the first book in the list. So if I print that out, then this is what we're going to get. So we have this object, that's the, the first book. If I want to print the title, I can basically access this like a dictionary. That's basically how the JSON package works. So then we get this. In principle, it's fine to work with data in this way, but you're kind of limiting yourself. You don't know anything about the structure of the data. You can validate the data easily or sanitize it or do things like that. And that's where a package like Pydantic comes into play. So I'd like to show you how to use Pydantic to work with data a bit more easily and add things like validation and sanitation. So in order to do that, let's first import Pydantic. And then what we can do, similar to how you would do it with data classes, that we're going to create a class that inherits from a Pydantic model. And that becomes the basic structure of your data. So let's create a class book. And we're going to use the base model class for that. So we have our book class and then very similar to how you would do it with data classes, we're going to define the fields that are part of the book. So we have a title, it's a string. We have an author, a publisher. Each book has a price and that's a float. We have ISBN numbers and these are actually optional. So not every book has both an ISBN 10 and an ISBN 30, so we're going to use the optional type. And finally we have the subtitle, which is also optional. There we go. So now we've defined this base model in Pydantic of book. And what we can do then is create a list of books from the data that we loaded from the JSON file. So we create a books a variable that's a list of books. And we also need to import the list type. There we go. So this is a list of books. And we're going to use a list comprehension to convert the data that we read from the file into this list of books. So I'm going through the data, getting the items from the data, and then construct a book from that item. What I'm doing here is unpacking the item into uh, keywords arguments so that it sets the right value to the right attribute inside the book class. So now we have our books and similar to data classes, Pydantic adds a couple of methods to easily print data and things like that. So I could print the first book. I'll just remove this and then this is what you get. So it prints out the book. You also see it nicely formats it with the uh, names of the attributes. Another thing you can do, because it's now a class, you can actually access data inside the book using the attributes. So if you want to print the title of the book, I can write here the title. And you see I'm getting typing information now. So this is really helpful when you're looking through the data and you want to do something with it in your Python code. As opposed to when you were using raw JSON, you didn't have any of that information. So printing out the title is now also really straightforward. Where Pydantic is really helpful is when you want to add a validation to your data. So for example, you want to make sure that the data that you're getting from this JSON file adheres to what you want the data to be like. One thing we could do is add validation for the ISBN 10 value. 
Uh, there's a particular rule about ISBN numbers. It's that the sum, the weighted sum of these numbers uh, should be divisible by 11. So we can add a validator that checks that these ISBN numbers are actually valid numbers. And the way you can do that in Bydantic is using a decorator. Let me show you how that works. So this is the validator decorator that I'm going to use. And we're going to use that on the ISBN 10 field, which is the field that we're going to check. And this is a class method, so I'm also adding a class method decorator here. It's not strictly needed, but you're going to run into problems with style if you remove it. And that function is going to get the value that we're going to need to validate. And default, we're just going to return that value, uh, and then we can do some checks before we return it. So one thing we need to do is check that the length of the ISBN number is indeed 10 digits. And sometimes some ISBN numbers contain dashes or maybe some empty space, etc. So we want to clean that up a little bit. So let's create a list of characters that doesn't contain any of that superfluous information. And we're going to use a list comprehension for that. And sometimes these digits can also be in X, uh, lowercase or uppercase, to indicate that it's 10. So now we have our list of characters. And we're going to verify that the length of the character list is 10. And if it's not 10, we need to raise an error. And we're going to add a custom error type for this because that's the neat way to do it. Let's call that an ISBN 10 format error. And that's an exception subclass. And this is going to have an initializer. We want to give it the current value so we can check what the wrong value is as well as a message. There we go. So now let's raise that ISMIATEN format error here. In order to check that the weighted sum of the ISBN number is indeed divisible by 11, we're going to need a convenient function to help us a little bit with that, to convert these characters to integers. I'm just going to include that inside this ISBN 10 valid function because this is the only place where we're going to use it. So this gets a string and gives us back an integer. If it's an X, we're going to return 10. Otherwise, we simply convert the character to an integer. And now we can compute this weighted sum. And we're going to enumerate over the characters. And then what we're going to need is the weight, which is 10 minus the index, times the converted value. And that's going to give us our weighted sum. And if that weighted sum is not divisible by 11, then we're going to raise an error as well. And we can use the ISBN 10 format error again for this. So I'm going to copy this over. For completeness, let's also add a doc string here. There we go. So now let's run this example again, and you'll see that it's going to run this validator. Now you don't see anything changing because all the ISBN values in the data are actually valid. But let's change one value to something else. Let's say I, I change this to 1, and now it's no longer divisible by 11. So if I run the example, we're going to get a validation error that the digit sum should be divisible by 11. So this is really useful. Uh, aspect of Pydantic, that when you're loading data, you can add these kind of validation functions to make sure that the data is clean and that the data is defined in the way that you want to have it. Another thing you can do is add validation on the whole of the uh, model. 
Uh, for example, in this case, we have a book that has either an ISBN 10 or an ISBN 13. These are optional types, so they can be missing. But we'd like to make sure that every book has at least one of the two. So a validator like this won't work because this validates individual fields. But you can validate the whole model as well. So let's add a validator that checks that the book has either an ISBN 10 or an ISBN 30, or both. Both is also acceptable. So then what we're going to do is create a root validator. In the root validator, you can specify whether it should validate it before it converts the values into a model or after. I'm just going to use uh, before, so we have access to the raw data. And this is also a class method. And this is going to check that ISBN 10 or ISBN 13 is there. So what we need to do is that one of these two is in the values dictionary. Let's call it values. That makes a lot more sense. So if both of these things are not inside the values, it means we're missing something and then we need to raise an error. Let's also create a custom error for that particular validation issue. Let's add an initializer. We want to have the title of the book where the problem occurs and the message. There we go. And then in the validator, we're going to raise this error. And the result of the root validator should be the list of values. So now we added an extra validator. Let's see how that works. So if I do this, oh, I still get this ISBN 10 formatting error. So I'm going to change this back to zero. So uh, then it should resolve that. Yeah, so it's working again. And now let's go to that same set of data and let's remove the ISBN numbers from, uh, let's say, the design patterns book. So here I'm removing these, there, and now if I run the example, I should get a root validation error. There you see, document should have either ISBN or ISBN 13. Let me put back the ISBN numbers. There we go. There's a few other things you can do as well with Pydantic. For example, Pydantic has a config class that you can add to a base model to change some settings. For example, what you could do is create a immutable object. So the way to do that is to have a class called config. And we're going to set the allow mutation value to false. And now books are immutable objects. So for example, if I try to change the book, it's going to give me an error. There you see book is immutable. There are other options you can set as well as part of this config object. For example, you can also automatically convert all string values to lowercase. Like so. And then if I print, let's say the first book, then this is what we're going to get. So you see all the titles, author, etc. is all now in lowercase. And that can be useful sometimes if you need to do some data processing. Another thing you can do is convert these models back to Python dictionaries simply using the dict method. So if I print this, then I'm going to get a dictionary containing the values of this particular book. And you can even do things like excluding particular values. But let's say uh, you want to exclude the price. Then this is how you do it. And now there is no price information. There's also an include option. So if you add include, then you're going to exclude everything else. So now we're only getting the price. Other things you can do easily in Pydantic is create a copy of an object. So let's say I have this book and then I can just create a copy using the copy function. There and now I've created a copy of that particular book. 
if your uh, model has more complicated things like lists inside of the model and things like that, you can also create a deep copy using the deep flag. Yeah, so there is a deep, and the, if you set that to true, it's going to create a deep copy and then make copy of everything that's inside the uh, base model as well. There's a couple of things that Pydantic can do that I didn't really talk about in this video. For example, it can generate a JSON schema automatically from the base models you defined. It also has a base settings class that allows you to easily read configuration data from, for example, environment variables. This is particularly useful if you have a database and you store the credentials in an environment variable and you want to easily access that in your application. So overall, I like Pydantic. I think it's a good solution for importing and validating data. Now, I'm not saying you should never use data classes anymore. I think data classes are still a really good alternative, especially if you don't need validation of your data. It's always nice to work with built-in packages if you can. Because that way, if somebody else needs to run your code, they don't have to install other third-party things. I did a video about data classes a couple of weeks ago. You can watch that here. So I hope you enjoyed this example. As usual, the code I worked on is available in the Git repository. The description is in the link below. The link is in the description below. That makes a lot more sense. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time. <laughs>